Hello ladies and welcome back to Still Looking Good 58. I am Faith and welcome to another edition of Wigs and Wisdom Wednesday. Today we are going to be talking about feminine issues. So I'm going to answer some questions related to feminine issues because these are things that we need to talk about. And as most of you know, I'm a former TV news reporter and I like to do my research. So I am going to tell you where I'm getting this information. So I'm just going to list it right over here. It's the American Cancer Society, WebMD, Healthline, the Cleveland Clinic, Medical News Today, and Women's Health. Okay, so let's get right to it. First, let's be clear. Having some odor is normal, okay, all right? You may experience odor if you started eating more tuna or more garlic or if you started taking dietary supplements. So once you stop those things, if you did have an odor because you were using those things or eating those things, then it should go away once you stop doing that, okay? All right. So let's point out another thing. We're gonna be talking about two different parts of our body, one, the vagina, and the other, the vulva. The vagina is our inside part, and that part is self-cleaning, believe it or not. It's self-cleaning. The outside part, the vulva, just needs a daily bath, just like you take a regular bath, okay? So sometimes people, though, get irritated by using soap, so there are some certain moisturizers that you can find. I would ask your doctor. Okay, let's get to question number one. Should you use feminine wipes? Okay, first of all, as I just said, just washing should be enough in terms of your outside part. But if you do use feminine wipes, they should not contain alcohol, parabens, or fragrances. Also, you don't, do not want to overuse these because they can upset the natural pH balance, okay? Also, you should not use them if you're prone to yeast infections. And avoid antibacterial versions of wipes because they kill the good vaginal bacteria. You should dispose of wipes in a trash can. Do not put them in the toilet because most of them do not break down. I'm going to show you a product that I found called Honey Pot. And this particular product I found at the Walmart and it says it is biodegradable and made of non-woven fibers, which means that it's supposed to break down. But you can test it by taking the wipes out, putting them in a bowl of water and seeing if they break down. That's probably the only way you're gonna know for sure. Okay, question number two. What about feminine sprays and douches? First of all, aerosols should be avoided in general because they do cause cancer. A lot of them have been shown to have cancer-causing agents. Douches, including vinegar and water, can upset the natural bacterial balance and make you more vulnerable to infections such as urinary tract and bacterial vaginosis. Again, these experts stress that the vagina is self-cleaning, so you don't really need to be douching. Question number three, what is a yeast infection? Yeast infection symptoms are inflammation, intense itching, a thick white odor-free discharge, that's odor-free, and the consistency is gonna be like cottage cheese, although it could be watery, and also pain during urination or sex, okay? Let's look at the causes of yeast infections. Now, this is what WebND says. Hormones, that's one cause. It says changes during pregnancy, breastfeeding, or menopause, or if you're taking birth control pills, can change the balance in your vagina. Number two, diabetes. If your diabetes is not well controlled, the increase in sugar in the mucous membranes, which are the moist linings of your vagina, can create a place for yeast to grow. Three, antibiotics. These drugs can kill off many of the good bacteria that live in your vagina. Four, douches and vaginal sprays. Well, we just talked about those because they can upset the regular balance. Five, a weakened immune system. If you are HIV positive or have another immune system disorder, the yeast may also grow uncontrolled. Six, though a yeast infection is not considered a sexually transmitted infection, it can be passed from person to person through sexual contact. Okay, now some doctors tell you that if you regularly like eat yogurt, that that can help you to avoid a yeast infection. And there are different schools of thought on that, so I'm going to read them to you. It says here that probiotics contain healthy bacteria which might help keep yeast levels in balance. 
Unfortunately, this doctor says there's no great data on whether eating foods or supplements with probiotics makes a big difference for yeast infection, but most people it says there's no harm in trying. Now, I have used yogurt in the past and my doctor told me that I was in much better shape because I was eating the yogurt. So it may not work for everybody, but it actually did work for me. Another tip that you need to think about as far as yeast infections, if you have uh, a yeast infection and you're using a certain over-the-counter treatment, it says that those treatments can lessen the effectiveness of a latex condom, a latex condom. So again, if you are trying not to get pregnant and you are uh, taking medication for a yeast infection, they are supposed to, those medication would lessen the effectiveness of a latex condom. So you want to keep that in mind. Question number four, chafing. I'm going to be talking about chafing now. So what is chafing? What causes chafing? It's any combination of friction, moisture, and irritating fabric. If you ride a bike regularly, you can also get chafing. And one of the things that I do, because I do ride a bike and my legs rub together, I use this. It's called chamois butter, and there is a version for women and men. This is the female version of it. Um, I think it's $19.99 for this big bottle, but I only use a really little bit. And if you put this between your thighs, if you're chafing, of course, after you've washed and everything, then it should help you. Question number five. Now we're going to move to deodorants. Is there a difference between deodorants and antiperspirants? The answer is yes, and I'm going to read this to you. According to the Cleveland Clinic, deodorant protects against odor. They make your sweat smell better, while antiperspirants protect against sweat and odor. Antiperspirants are the ones that contain aluminum, which makes you sweat less. According to Healthline, deodorant should not and does not contain aluminum. Now what the ingredient is, it's called aluminum salts, and these salts plug up your pores to eliminate sweat. But the American Cancer Society says that there is no scientific evidence that says aluminum either worsens or causes breast cancer. What they do know is that the aluminum can soak into the breast tissue, but they don't have any scientific evidence that actually says that aluminum causes or worsens breast cancer. So I wanted to put that out there. One of the things that I did personally was I went to TJ Maxx and I found some natural deodorants because I just wanted some that didn't have a lot of other ingredients in them. And I tested a few and I'm gonna share those with you. The first one that I tested is called Smarty Pits. And I got this one in super strength at TJ Maxx for about $4, but you can get it online um, for about $10 at Ulta and $13 at Amazon. This one is in super strength and it is called Tropical Paradise. So when I tested this one, I put it on at nine o'clock in the morning and I was still smelling like a tropical paradise at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> so this one worked really well for me. And I think the reason this one worked so well is because I am a stinker when it comes to underarms. I tell you, if I don't put on deodorant, it's a bad thing for me and anybody else around me. So this super strength worked really well for me. The next one that I tested was called Schmitz. And Smith's has been around for a while, and a lot of people do use Smith's as a natural deodorant. This one is rose and vanilla, and this is not a super strength. This is original formula, and I tried this one, and it also lasted all day long, so I didn't have a problem with this one. It also comes in a sensitive um, version. The last one I tried is this one, Humble Brands, and this one... This one didn't do so well for me. Um, it, this one's in lavender and it's in regular strength and it didn't work well for me. Now, if this one comes in a super strength, I might try it, but this one didn't work as well for me. And of course, you can get this one at their website, humblebrands.com and in other locations. So um, that was pretty much what I wanted to talk with you guys about. I wanted to just make sure that we discussed these things because it's just real important for us to have these conversations and to know what the facts are in terms of our feminine uh, hygiene. So that's why I wanted to share this with you. So let's move on to the wig review. What I have done is I decided that I was going to do a review on a human hair wig. And this one is from Wow Ebony. And it is 180% density, uh, although it feels like 130. Uh, it's 10 inches long and it's just a straight bob. So let's take a look. So in this video, I'm just showing you the box and they also had a really cute little bag that the wig came in. So the first thing that I did was I realized that I wanted to cut those combs out. So there were two combs in the front, one at the head and one in the back. And the next thing I needed to cut was the bangs because as you can see, they're really, really long. 
So I decided to go and get myself a measuring tape so that I could decide how long I wanted those bangs and to measure them. And I think I took off probably about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of those bangs because they usually come really, really long. Don't ask me why, they just do. So I just um, took a small pair of scissors and just started cutting them until I cut them to my liking. And after I was finished cutting them, all I really did was do a little bit of cleanup work on them. Uh, after I cleaned up the, um, the bangs then and got them where I wanted to, I got my curling iron. And as you know, this curling iron type can kind of crimp. And so I started at the top and curl down so that that crimp part doesn't get uh, make that mark in the hair and then I just bumped it at the ends and that was pretty much it. Okay ladies as you saw all I really had to do was cut the bangs on this one because they came really long um, but I like this wig and the reason I'm bringing these to you is because I kind of want to give you guys some alternatives to um, being at the mercy of the synthetic companies right now because of the fact that a lot of their really nice wigs are getting to be really really expensive and this wig cost me $119.40, I think. And again, this one is human hair. Um, and so I'm thinking that we really need to be looking at some maybe alternatives to synthetics. And I know some people aren't really crazy about human hair, and I get that. If you don't want to wear human hair, that's fine. I'm also going to be showing you some uh, less expensive synthetic wigs um, from um, a variety of different um, manufacturers. So look forward to that. I also wanted to let you guys know that I will not be doing any uploads in February. I'm taking February off, but I will be back in March. Um, I've got a new series that I'm going to bring to you as well as some other things. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this version of Wigs and Wisdom Wednesday. If you would like to see more videos like this, just click those links up above. Thank you so much for watching. And as I always say, if you're going to show love to anyone today, please show it to the creator. I'm still looking good. And of course, so are you. See you next time. Thank you.